Hello there. Welcome back to Tired Old Queen at the Movies. Please subscribe if you haven't already. You can catch Steve in shorter bits on TikTok at Steve Hayes TOQ. And don't forget about our great TOQ merchandise located below. Now let's go see the one and only Steve Hayes, the tired old queen at the movies. Oh, Johnny. Oh, Johnny, happy Thanksgiving. And I thought this Thanksgiving we'd do a musical. And I always wanted to do one with Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers, but I decided I wanted to do the last one that they ever did together, which was called The Barclays of Broadway from 1949, directed by Charles Walters, with a book by Betty Comden and Adolph Green, and choreography by Hermes Pan. This is basically a story that kind of mirrors their real relationship of Astaire and Rogers. They're a married couple on Broadway. She wants to be a serious actress. Wasted in musical comedy. He just wants to keep dancing in musicals. That beats a tempo of its own. She meets this French guy who's a producer, and he decides to produce her in a serious play. She goes and does this. At first is a failure, then they have a fight, then he takes out a new partner, and maybe they're not going to make it. And it's this typical musical comedy thing, interest burst with songs by Harry Warren and Ira Gershwin. A weekend in the country, glorious there's no doubt. A weekend in the country, watch the next train out. This was originally done as a vehicle for Fred Astaire and Judy Garland. Astaire wanted to work with Garland after they had done Easter Parade. And by the time that Barclays got around to being done, um, Judy couldn't do it. And she was just too ill, and she was removed from it. And they called up Ginger Rogers, and they said, you haven't done a movie with Fred Astaire since 1939 when they did the story of Vernon and Irene Castle. Do you want to do it? And she said, yeah, I do. I really do. Plus, Ginger's career by that time was kind of on a low end. Ginger had fought to have better roles in the 30s. She was gradually building up a really solid resume of good productions that were not that were outside musicals. She did Stage Door with Katherine Hepburn, who was her arch rival at RKO, and she did a really good job, which we did on Tired Old Queen at the Movies. She did serious dramas like Primrose Path with Joan Cray, which was lovely. She did funny movies with Jimmy Stewart, like, like Vivacious Lady. She, you know, she really covered it. And then she did Kitty Foyle, which was taken from a novel about a regular American girl on the workforce. Hard as a pine knot. And she won the Oscar for 1940 for the Best Actress, and she won it over Martha Scott in Our Town, Catherine Hepburn in The Philadelphia Story, Joan Fontaine in Rebecca, and Betty Davis in The Letter. So she was really right on top for a while. And then she had a string of movies. She did Roxy Hart, which was a hit, a comedy by Billy Wilder called The Major and the Minor with Ray Land. But she gradually wanted to become more grand, wanted to become more of a lady and less of thought of as a chorus girl. The need to prove yourself, to lift yourself to heights no one ever dreamed you were capable of. Nobody really wanted to come to see her anymore because they, they knew Ginger from the chorus. She was a chorus girl who made it good, and they liked that. One case in point, she was offered Ball of Fire, and she said, I don't want to play that. That woman is common. And Barbara Stanwyck said, I'll play it. Oh, I am common. Let's go. And got an Oscar nomination out of it. Well, maybe I'm just crazy, but to me, you're a regular yum-yum type. Yum-yum. Yeah, don't you know what that means? No, we never got to that. Well, we got to it now, and I'm glad it's out. Ginger wasn't too great about accepting certain parts. She did a huge musical called Lady in the Dark that was based on a musical on Broadway, a Kurt Vile musical with Gertrude Lawrence, who was a great lady, could, could play those great lady kind of sophisticated parts. And Ginger wanted to be like Gertrude Lawrence and play that part. In high school, I played Juliet. And it was a big bomb. It was a big bomb, big technicolor bomb. So that didn't ante up. So when this came along, this gave her a chance to show what she could do, get back on top again, and they did. Now Astaire, he, in the meantime, when they broke up, he started taking up different people, different pairings. And um, he danced with Eleanor Powell in Broadway Melody of 1940. His favorite dance partner was Rita Hayworth. 
at Columbia and they did You Were Never Lovelier and You'll Never Get Rich and she was a dancer personified and he loved her and she looked great so they had a really good time. He also had to dance sometimes with people who didn't have the credentials, you know Paula Goddard but made it work Fred made it, always made it work. So when this movie came along, Ginger had said I had to get back into shape. I hadn't danced in like that in a long time, and I knew I was going to be put through the, the ringer. The movie starts out with she's in a gold dress. Oh, God, she looks, and she looks wonderful. And they're over the credits, they're dancing. <laughs> then they are in rehearsal, and they do this psycho tap number that is so good. It's the reason I wanted to do this movie. I, you, you just, Ginger is having such a good time and it's a really intricate two person tap dance number and boy is it hot, hotter than July. And you know, usually in the Fred Astaire movies, when Ginger would dance with Fred, she wouldn't, show that she was having such fun. You know, she wouldn't let loose. And this one, she shows it. And she's dancing. Her face is just registered. And she's doing it and doing it. And Fred's going, whoa, okay, go. They're just back and forth. It's so hot. You're just going to love it. Then they go back and, you know, they start arguing. And the one person who's commenting on them through the whole thing is Oscar Levant. Now, Oscar Levant was the foremost expert on the music of George Gershwin. And he was a concert pianist and composer in his own right. He could play anything. And he does a few numbers in this. <laughs> He's astonishing. He was also really good at one-liners. One of his fam most famous one-liners, not in this movie, but just being Oscar Levant was, I knew Doris Day before she was a virgin. You know? <laughs> He's in Humoresque. He's the best friend of John Garfield in Humoresque who says to Joan Crawford, tell me something, does your husband get in the way of your marriage? <laughs> he was, he always, he was sort of like, a male version of Eve Arden. He always vocalized what the audience was thinking and nobody else in the movie would say. I hope you two have had enough of this good, clean fun. Why don't we all go inside and take a sleeping pill? There's a famous, famous, famous dance with Fred Astaire on his own. He always had a solo. And this is one where he works in a shoe store and it's filled all these shoes dance with him without, without seeing anybody. And what they did was that they had all the male dancers in black against a black screen with white shoes on and photographed that and then superimpose that over Fred. So it looks like he's dancing with all these live shoes running around. Very imaginative. It's kind of like that one he does in Royal Wedding where he dances around the room. And, you know, the room's turning around. It's that kind of thing. And they could do that then. They started experimenting with that kind of thing. Kind of surreal, you know, for musicals. But it works. It works. And then they get to a point in the musical where they finally get back together and it's they've gone it's typical musical comedy and they're fighting we're not talking we're talking we're not talking you know all this stuff can't even walk across the stage without you right can't even make a gesture correct big fat spin golly you're done tootin well i've had enough what number can we do as the final number of the movie and they called up ginger and ginger said let's do they can't take that away from me because fred sang it to me in a movie, but we never danced it. And it's lovely. It just flows. This movie is old fashioned Hollywood glamor, MGM style. It's got the production values. It's got the glorious cinematography. Charles Walters was one of the great directors in musicals. He just knew what he was doing. He let the actors do what they did best and just highlighted that, you know, so well. And you're so glad to see these two together. It's a lovely pairing. And when you watch it, you go, oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Yes. And that's how you're going to feel watching Fred Astaire, Ginger Rogers, and Oscar Levant in Charles Walters, The Barclays of Broadway. 
And happy Thanksgiving from all of us at Steve Hayes, tired old queen of the movies. Let's all go to the lobby. When I was young, I looked like Al Capone, only without the compassion. <laughs> Delicious things to eat.